Okay, I got this cool idea for a project and I want to share it with you. So basically, I'm a little bit obsessed with automating repetitive tasks in my workflow. And one of those tasks as a junior developer is converting a design file into a live HTML document. Now, I don't think I can automate that entire process, but there are definitely a few things that I can automate. So let's get to it. So basically, this is the idea. The designers on my work, they'll give us a document that looks very much like this. Um, it's a general style guide for the website. It sort of lays out what the different fonts need to be, the colors, the gradients, etc. So what we'll do is we'll go in and create a stats file that has all of these styles saved as variables. And then we'll also create a few class selectors so that we can quickly add classes to elements to apply these styles. So as you can see, it's actually a relatively simple file. There's some fonts for desktop, for mobile, there's a few colors, a few gradients, and that's about it. And we just need to convert these into a SAS file, and that would make my life quite a bit easier. Now, for this example, I took these gradients from this free download by Outlane. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to have that file for yourself. Now, the reason why I think that this could be automated is because Figma has this great API. So all you have to do is send a simple get request and you can get all of the JSON data that outlines all of the styles of your document. So what I'm going to try and do is take that JSON data and convert it into a SAS file. So obviously the first place to go looking is the documentation to the API. Now Figma has a pretty cool page that outlines pretty much step by step how to make a GET request and get all of the JSON data that we need. So after reading this, it becomes pretty clear that this shouldn't be too hard. So now having a little bit of a basic overview about how this API is going to work, um, let's try to do a quick GET request. I'm using Postman here and I'm just doing a GET request to my board ID and we'll test that and there we go we've got all the data that we need now we just need to make some sense out of it so now that we know that we can actually make an API request and we can get the data that we need we sort of need to plan out how this is going to work because the thing about a project like this is it can get very big and complicated very fast if we don't keep it under control so what I've done is I've written out a specification that sort of outlines how I plan on dealing with each one of the different types of styles. So the typography, the colors, and the gradients. So the general overview is I plan on creating models for each one of the style types because color will have to be treated differently than typography and that needs to be different, uh, treated differently than gradients. So each one will sort of have its own properties and its own methods. So by creating models, hopefully I can make sure that everything sort of stays organized and manageable. With all of that sort of roughly planned out, I think we can jump into the code and start trying to make this work. Okay, so unfortunately I didn't record myself coding most of this, but I've finished a very basic version of the model for the colors. Um, essentially, it's just a class with a constructor that you pass in the data, which is the raw JSON data from the API. Um, this sets a few properties like the RGB and A properties. It also has a bunch of methods like RGB to int and converting RGB to hex. And then it also has a getter for the CSS color, which returns either the hex string or an RGBA string if there is opacity involved. So testing that on the side here, you can see all of our color names with their respective CSS color definitions listed below them. And you can see here this yellow does have an opacity, so it is returning an RGBA, uh, which is valid SAS code. And then um, for all the others, uh, it's returning a, a hex string because it doesn't have an opacity. Yes, it works. Okay, so the gradient model was a lot harder to do than the color model, mainly because the gradient model has to keep track of many more things than the color model has to do. Because the gradient can have multiple colors all along the gradient line at different positions, at different opacities. It also can have a particular angle 
and it also needs to be able to be reversible. So all of those things had to be managed appropriately and I think it's finally working. So if we have a quick look at the code, I haven't gone around to doing fonts yet, but I'm just happy that the colors and the gradients are working. Essentially, I'm looping through all the color objects and I'm printing out the CSS variables that I've created. For each gradient object, I print out the color variable for the gradient object because the gradient object can have multiple different colors, all of which have color variables set. After that, I loop through the gradient object again and then I print out all of the gradient variables. Okay, so I'm gonna run the node app now. I'm just gonna pull it out a little bit. There we go. Oh, pull it out a bit more and then it'll be a bit clearer. Okay. So you can see here are the color variables specified and indeed if they have an opacity then they get written as RGBA. Otherwise they just get given their uh, hex code then here you'll see all of the gradient colors um, defined. So yellow color one, yellow color two. And then down here you have the actual gradient variables defined with their angle and then each of the colors at their respective positions. So proof of concept, it's working. And so the nice thing about this is if you now go and change something, for example, Let's change this to um, a red gradient. So we'll rename it to red gradient and then we'll give it some new colors. So I changed the name, I changed the colors and I also changed the angle. So if we now go back to the code and I rerun this again. So you'll see here that the angle has been updated and if you go look up here, these colors are now different than uh, they were here. So the nice thing about this is that um, anytime the designers make a change to the Figma file, all that the developers would have to do is rerun this file and it would regenerate all of these variables immediately. And so in this way, we can keep the design and the code always in sync and that way we can significantly cut down on development time, especially when small changes are being made to these style properties. I'll be making the project open source. It'll be up on my GitHub. So if you want to clone it or if you want to submit a pull request, then feel free to. Other than that, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll be making a few more about other projects that I'm working on. So thank you. I'm out.